Okay, the photoelectric effect. Effect. So the photoelectric effect, effect experiment, it's an experiment. I just tend to always leave off that word. And this probably hurts 18, 1880s this was happening. So at the same time James Maxwell was figuring out electric fields and magnetic fields created um, energy that it was given off in the form of waves that we call electromagnetic waves. Uh, at, this, at, at that same time, uh, Hertz and Planck and a few others were working on this experiment called the photoelectric effect. So they had an evacuated glass tube. Evacuated meaning no air in it. Glass, so that it didn't collapse. If it was plastic or something, then you took the air out, it would collapse. So it needed to have a sturdy body, so when the air wasn't inside, it would still stay sturdy. It had, they put two metal plates, one on either side, and then they connected these plates, so the plates were inside the glass tube, but then they connected them by wire, and they ran the wire outside the tube, connected it to a power supply. This side too came out of the tube, ran it through an and meter so they could see current, and hooked it to the other side of the power supply. This side, remember, the short side's negative, the long side's positive. That means that this plate would be negatively charged because it's hooked up to the negative side of the battery, and this side would be positively charged because it's hooked up to the positive side of the battery. This plate was made of what was called a photosensitive metal. Now, photoelectric effect, photosensitive, photography, the photo means light. You can replace the word photo with light. So light electric effect, light sensitive metal, photography, light photo, lightography, okay? All of them use light. So this metal is sensitive to light. Uh, it has a negative charge, and this metal, they called it the collection electrode. Remember the two sides of a battery are the electrodes. So this is the negative electrode, uh, photosensitive metal, and this side is the collection electrode. Okay? And this whole thing is the evacuated tube. So this is our setup. And so what they did was they shone light on this um, photosensitive metal and it would have been monochromatic. Mono, one, chromatic, color. So monochromatic light. One color, one wavelength. And they would have done the one color, one wavelength so they had a control. They knew exactly what frequency of light was going in there. Because remember, C is equal to F lambda. Speed of light in a vacuum is constant. So if it's only one frequency, then it's only one wavelength. Okay, so or if it's only one wavelength, it's only one frequency. All right, so this is the setup. So they shot, now notice this circuit is not complete. There's a big gap between these two plates. So even though the two sides are hooked to a battery, no current could flow here because there, it's not a, com not a complete circuit. But when I shine, when they shone light on this photosensitive metal, what happened was little electrons were ejected. And they were ejected and began to move across the tube. Okay, so this side was negative, so they were t thrown off the negative with some kinetic energy, some velocity. And then, of course, because the electrons are negative, this plate is going to repel them, and this plate is positive, so it's going to attract them. So they flowed across the um, evacuated tube. It's evacuated, which means there are no particles in here that are going to run into, that it, for them to run into, nothing to hamper their movement or slow them down. So they reach this side, the positive plate, and now they'll flow through the wire and come back to the battery because they're electrons, so they'll be drawn to the positive side of the battery, and we will know it's happening 
because the ammeter will register a current. Okay, so incident light of one wavelength shone on the photosensitive metal that causes the photosensitive metal to eject electrons. These electrons then move across the evacuated tube to the collection electrode, and so it's called a collection electrode or a collector because it's collecting the electrons. And then these electrons flow through the wire back to the battery, uh, and a current is registered, registered in the ammeter. Okay, so this is the experiment. The question is, why? Why is this happening? Now, so they, they messed around to try to see what was going on. So when no light was shone, no current was registered in the ammeter. That makes sense. So it's definitely an, an, a result of the current of the light hitting the photosensitive metal. So then they said, well, let's make the light brighter. And if you make the light brighter, it means it's more intense, right? And so when they made the light brighter, there would be more current registered in the ammeter. But only as long as the frequency of the light was above some minimum frequency. So a few minutes ago I said it was monochromatic. One wavelength, one frequency. If the frequency was too low, then it didn't matter how bright the light was, nothing came off. So as long as the frequency was above some minimum frequency, which they ended up calling the threshold frequency. Remember from grade 11 physics, we called the th we had a threshold of hearing. So this is a threshold frequency, which is known as FO. The O means like the minimum, the base, F0 it really is. Okay, so as long as the frequency of the light was above some threshold frequency, then electrons were ejected. But if it wasn't, it didn't matter how intense the light was, no electrons were ejected. Um, but once the light was above some minimum frequency, then the more intense the light got, the more electrons that came on. So in other words, if we did two charts, so on this side we did number of electrons ejected, and down here we did um, frequency, then once, once the frequency, and, and so that means we're keeping the intensity the same, and then on this one, number of electrons, and we'll put um, intensity down here, and we'll keep the frequency the same. So here the intensity is the same, the brightness of the light is the same, and in this one the frequency is the constant, okay? So in these two, right, because you can only vary one thing at a time if you really want to see what's going on. So the first thing they varied was the frequency. So they kept the intensity the constant, they varied the frequency, and what they found that was that below some frequency FO, absolutely nothing happened. But above that frequency, number of electrons given off didn't change no matter how big the frequency went. As soon as you went below the FO though, absolutely nothing happened. Okay, for intensity, as long as the frequency that they were shining it at was bigger than the FO, then as they increased the intensity, the number of electrons increased. Well, this was all wonderful and good, but it really did not help them figure out what the heck was going on and why. So to figure out what the heck was going on and why, they decided to change their apparatus. So instead of using a battery, they decided, I'm trying to separate the paper here, they decided to change the apparatus to have a variable power supply so that they could make it, make the voltage bigger or smaller as they wanted to. So they had a variable voltage or a variable power supply. Still hooked up to our tube here. Still running through an ammeter here.